In this next clip, I'm going to go over HK format and some of the parameters of the variables A, B, H, and K. And then I'm going to provide an example of how to sketch a square root graph using this format. So first of all, I just want to discuss A real quick. A, the role of A is going to, it has a couple functions actually, but it can get complicated in pre-calculus, but for our purposes here for calculus, we're going to talk about A as either being positive or negative, and if it's negative, it's going to produce what's called a vertical reflection. Essentially, if A is negative, it's going to take the graph's basic shape and it's going to turn it upside down. So if A is negative, it gives it what's called a vertical reflection or it turns it upside down. B, if this value on the inside is negative, you're going to get what's called a horizontal reflection, which is basically a flip from left to right. Now, some graphs, some functions won't have any reflections at all. Some might have one or the other, and others might have both existing at the same time. A and B could both be negative. H is basically a translation or a slide to the left or right. So I'm going to write down slide left or right. And K is going to be a slide up or, up or down. Okay, so hopefully that brings back some memories from pre-calculus. Now, in this example that I'm about to show you with the square root graph, um, something odd happens almost from the start, and that is when you look at it, um, the coefficient of x is negative 2, and if you focus down here on this green box, one of your goals is to get the coefficient of x to be positive 1. Once you do that, it's it fits much more easily with this template than if it's not. So we're going to take a few moments and we're going to manipulate this function so that it looks a lot more like this template over here on the left. So to do that, I'm going to start by just flipping the 4 and the negative 2x. So I'm going to say negative 1 half square root negative 2x plus 4 and then plus 3 on the outside. So you'll notice the x is on the left under the radical and over here at the template the x is also on the left. And again it's our goal to get it to look as close to the template as possible. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a negative 2. Now it's not going to come out of the radical but it's going to come out of that expression so you're going to need some grouping symbols here to do that. So negative 2 and now, when I take that out, I'm left with x minus 2. And then the plus 3 on the outside. So now it's looking the basic as close shape to the template the as I'm going to get. And I'm going to draw a little picture of that. That's a wing from the clip before. Now, I'll use some color here to, to demonstrate. As I focus on this negative here, that tells me there is a vertical reflection or turning it upside down. So in terms of this cue, reflection, yes, there is a reflection. The wing gets turned upside down, and I'll put VR next to that for vertical reflection. However, we're not done yet. There is another negative on the inside where B is. B is also negative, so we're going to get a second reflection. This one is going to be a horizontal reflection. So it's going to take this shape, and it's going to actually flip it left to right, or in this case, right to left. So this is going to be an HR, a horizontal reflection. And we've now applied all the reflections that they're going to be. So this is what it's going to look like ultimately. Now the translation point is sort of the net result after you've done your slides. This graph is going to go 2 to the right and 3 up. So I'm going to write down 2, 3. Remember that it's opposite in the inside. So we see a negative 2, but it's really plus 2. And then on the outside, it is what you see, so plus 3. Now the y-intercept is pretty easy to find. You're going to let x equal 0, and then you're going to solve for the resulting y. And you can use any of the three versions here, because they're all equivalent, hopefully. But I'm going to work with the top one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let x equal 0. And we have negative a half and we have the square root of, 
if x is 0, then this chunk sort of goes away, and I'm just left with 4, and then plus 3. Doing this pretty basic evaluation, the square root of 4 is 2, negative a half of 2 is negative 2, and negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So there's the y-intercept, 1. The x-intercept always requires a little bit of extra work, so just be prepared for that. Um, to find the x-intercept, we're going to look y equals 0, and I'm going to say 0 equals negative a half square root of 4 minus 2x plus 3. To start, I'm going to take this negative chunk right here and I'm going to move it to the left. 1 half square root of 4 minus 2x equals 3. I will double both sides or multiply both sides by 2. 4 minus 2x is equal to 6. Now I'll square both sides. 4 minus 2x is equal to 36. I'm running out of space here, so I'll come up here. And now I'll divide by 4. Negative 2x is equal to 9. And finally, x equals negative 9 halves, which is the same as negative 4.5. So we have negative 4.5. So with this little five-step cue list, we're going to be able to pretty accurately sketch the graph of this function. So let me just circle these things here. These are like the five puzzle pieces to get a graph fairly quickly. So let's see what we got here. I'm going to start with the translation point, which is 2, 3. So I'll put a, a dot there, and I'll label 2, 3. And I've got the y-intercept at 0, 1. So I'll put 0, 1. And I've got an x-intercept at negative 4.5. 1, 2, 3, 4.5. So that's going to be 4.5, 0. And the basic shape is supposed to look like this guy here with the double reflection. And I think that's going to work. If I follow these three points, it's going to work perfectly. So let's see how we get Let's see how we do this here. All right, so there's your wing with the double reflection. At this point, you should go on to the problem set that is associated with clip number two.